Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. Actually, this is my last night in Osaka. I'm in a different hotel room, but even this room has an echoey sound. I'm so sorry. Uh, there is some good news, though. All the projects in the top 22 by market cap are actually rebounding slightly. There is a sea of green for the last one hour change. And so I believe we have found our footing and have stabilized a little bit. So what in the world happened? Yeah, was it the accumulation of 1.2 billion that built up with cells and had minimum amount of buys? I don't think so. I mean, this market flips easy based on fear. So it's possible, but I don't think so. Was it backed? I see some articles out there that are blaming backed. Well, we had too much expectation. Yeah, definitely for sure. I think we did, but I don't think it's the reason that we saw the price action like we did. And Google's advancement in quantum computing? I don't think so. Craig Wright, was he up to something? Well, maybe, <laughs> but I don't think in this case that is what is happening. And Trump, is it the gridlock in Washington? No, I think it's the hash rate. There was a 40% drop in the hash rate. It was sudden, it was unexplainable, and it scared everybody. You can see that I have the um, the hash rate drop. You can see uh, the graph here on the screen. Now you have to understand with mining of BTC that a lot has to do with the future predictions of price. And what I mean by that is when miners feel bullish, they ramp up. So when there was a 40% drop suddenly, yeah, it kind of sent a message that, oh my gosh, this is really a bad sign. And then that bad momentum started to occur and it fueled fear and investors and traders sold off, I do believe. So the big question is, we okay, so the hash rate dropped 40%, but why did it drop? Well, I'm not sure we will ever know for sure, but it could be any one of these regions, reasons, like there could have been a power outage with a hydro dam in China, which translated to a power outage at a mining facility. It could have even been done, you need to understand, it could have even been done intentionally by a miner to drive fear through the market. The intention was to shift the momentum for a window of opportunity for the miner to accumulate because miners right now, they are really having a tough time being profitable. Even at this price, it's difficult. So you don't, you just never know. Maybe they're coordinating something with whales. This is a very unregulated space. And you know, the truth of the matter is it could be anything. It even it could be a miner that said, I've had enough, I'm throwing in the towel. And he just suddenly went dark without any of the other miners being notified. And it took them 24 hours to scramble to make up the difference. It could have even been just a simple technicality. You know, a mining pool could have had some technical difficulties. I'm not sure we'll really know, but Bitcoin supporters, yeah, they're dispelling the hash rate problems. Why? Well, because it points to a stability issue. The stability issue is with proof of work. It's vulnerable. And for those invested, they don't want to talk about this. Even I don't want to talk about this, but it is what it is. And it is not good at all when that much hash rate can go offline instantly. So when you have that much power concentrated in one area, as Ivan on the channel, Ivan on tech said, this really doesn't show decentralization. I don't think anybody could argue with his statement. And boy, a lot of people got wrecked today when 600 million plus was liquidated on BitMEX. Talk about a bad day. Well, I know two things for sure. 
First is those that love volatility and have a stomach to stay in this space are quite happy to dollar cost average in. And then the second thing is a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, are tired of waiting and they feel irritated. I hear you. I understand you. I truly have the compassion and the empathy. I respond to nearly 80% of those comments out there. Um, I'm a little behind because I'm traveling, so my schedule is, is slightly out of whack. But I do hear you, and um, I do hear you. So if I don't have the right words, and I feel like tonight I don't have the right words, uh, I do want to encourage you to go listen to a video by Jungle Link because Jungle had the right words tonight. I think this is the best video he's ever had. I'm going to put a link to it in the description below. He really takes a great high level perspective on the space and what we just went through. And if you're feeling down and if you're feeling uh, jittery and irritated and angry. Uh, I recommend. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure it's going to be perfect for everyone, but it even helped me. And I will encourage you to listen to Jungle's video. All right. And there is some curious timing. I don't think it's a coincidence, but there is a new blog out by David Schwartz. Of course, he's the CTO at Ripple. And in his post, he says that we've lost sight of what decentralization actually means. And more importantly, we've confused the true purpose and value uh, in the different assets and blockchain technologies that, you know, are offered out there for solving different real world problems. He says, and I think this is the most important statement in his whole blog. He says, we have to think less about our fiefdom. Now, what does that word mean? Fiefdom is defined as a territory or sphere of operation controlled by a particular person or group. And I think he really does hit it on the head with that statement. This article then moves to the specifics of why XRP was built and and the backbone, which is the XRP ledger. Uh, so there's no single party that can control it. And you can understand that no transaction submitted to the XRP ledger has ever been discriminated against or censored, unlike proof of work systems where transactions executed in each block are solely determined by the preferences of a single miner, he writes and goes on to say that with its unique speed, reliability, and scalability, XRP and the Ledger are built to foster continued innovation across the industry. And what is really great to see is that there is a growing list of use cases. So it is a bigger picture than just cross-border remittances, but XRP is going to be very instrumental in web content monetization. And this isn't a dream. This is already, you know, this is already in place and it has been executed. Also the web browser monetization. And then there's Tipbot, which I love. I just love to send XRP to other people in the community. There's CoinGate, which are the, um, the, um, entity for payments uh, in processing payments and raised in space. They're new. They're an investment group using XRP to fund participants in the music industry. So it is all very, you know, much an ecosystem that is building. It has real utility. And I think these, um, volatilities that we see in price, I think they're going to be here for a while until the market cap grows over a trillion. We got close to that number in 2017, but I think until we get over that number, we're going to continue to see these kinds of wild swings. So if you're going to stay in this space, just be aware of that and be mentally prepared. 
So, okay, everybody, I'm going to jump to a little bit of fluff. And we're going to jump to rugby because actually I have a picture that I took on the train platform that I wanted to share with you. And I thought I would just kind of get into the story by telling you that Japan won its first game against Russia in the Rugby World Cup. And we've got a big game against Ireland on, what is it? It's going to happen oh, very soon. It's happening on Sunday is it no 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 here it is happening on Saturday the 28th uh, I'm <laughs> very much looking forward to this yeah the whole country is in full swing with rugby here uh, the game that's going to take place against Ireland is going to take place in Shizuoka prefecture Shizuoka is beautiful. It's very scenic. Uh, it's best known for its view of Mount Fuji. And of course, it has the very best green tea in Japan. So you'll find too, it's um, the home of soccer leagues for children, mainly in part because of the climate. It's very mild in this part of Japan. But here is what I wanted to show you, and that is a picture I took on the platform. Oh gosh, this kind of view in Tokyo is quite unique and it stands out. And I think it's quite fun actually. And it tells me that when the Olympics come, I think we're going to see some similar unique views, but it's really, really fun to see these fans come to Tokyo and enjoy the uh, sport. So I tried to find, yeah, his tartan, by the way, where it's from, because usually you can determine the uh, region of where that uh, tartan comes from, but I couldn't find his tartan on this list. So uh, I'm gonna show it one more time. If anybody knows where that one is from, I'm guessing because he's, with someone who's in a green shirt. I'm guessing it's reflecting an Irish clan, but I don't know. I'm just not an expert in this particular um, area. All right, everybody. Yeah, do take care. All right, sayonara for now. Bye-bye.